today's lesson is going to show you how to create the 3D solid model for the centering bushing, which is found in the intermediate solid modeling module. We're going to click into this, scroll down, and we're going to rotate clockwise and get a better look at the centering bushing. Now this one is fairly straightforward. Uh, it's not too difficult. We're going to introduce a new feature in the creation of this today concerning the counterboard holes that you see here and here. Instead of drawing this or modeling it three times, we're going to draw it once and we're going to be using a circular pattern to equally position it around the rear uh, flange. And then we're also going to be creating this front hub, extruding it outward, and we're going to be creating this sketch on the front hub and extruding it through the back flange. So to get started, I'm going to be creating a circle in 2D sketch mode at a diameter of 4.750. So let's switch to Inventor, click New. And this is English standard inch IPT. Alright, we're going to pick 2D sketch, select my favorite plane, the XY plane. Circle at XY00 zero zero and dimension this to be 4.75. Zoom out, hit finish sketch and extrude. The thickness according to the iPad sheet I'm referencing next to my screen says that it is 0 0.620. Hit OK. All right, so what we're going to do next is create another sketch on the face of this. This time we're going to be looking at creating the hub. So I'm going to select circle again, XY00. Zero zero, and this hub is going to be drawn at a diameter of 2 inches. And we're going to extrude it forward. And it doesn't actually give me the length of the hub itself. It only gives me the overall, the overall length. So the overall length is 2.62. So all I need to do now is subtract the rear, the rear diameter I already extruded, which is 0.62. In other, in other words, this should be just two inches. And hit OK. Next, another 2D sketch on the front of the hub. This time we're going to create the hole that passes through the hub in the back and extrude cut it all the way through. So this is a diameter of 1.375. Check mark. Extrude and we're going to go cut and we're going to set the extents to all and then hit OK. Next, we're going to work on that constrained sketch that we see right here. Click to the front. We're going to select the hub as our 2D sketch surface, right? So you can see right here, I'm sketching on the front side of the hub. Switch back to front. And what I'm going to be doing is creating a, 
creating a circle on x0 up here. And what I can do is hit general dimension. And I can make this a diameter of 0.480 because the radius is listed as 0.240. All right, so we got that done. We're going to draw a line here. And we're going to come down right before the hub, draw a line out like this, and then down to about here. We're going to create another line here at our collinear point, touch to make this collinear or to make this vertical, right? So we're keeping this line the same length as this line. We're coming out again. I'm, I'm just eyeballing this dimension and I'm coming down until I reach the hub, hole like I did on this side. Okay, so at this time I can do some trimming and constraining. So I'm gonna be trimming away that part of the circle with a 2D sketch trim. And I'm going to be creating a dimension from the center to here, that's also going to constrain this side because I took care when I sketched this. And this is going to be 1.243. Now, if this one doesn't constrain when you run this dimension, just run this dimension on, on this side and it will be the same. So that's supposed to be 1.243. Moving on, the distance between this vertical line and the center is given as 0.56 repeated on this side and from here to the center is listed as 0.42 And what we also have to do is create a fillet at a value of 0.12 here and here. We can run a dimension from here to here, set that 0 0.240 on each side. So just touch that, that origin. This is why starting drawings at the origin makes things so much easier. This is why, again, uh, there's, there's so many reasons why starting at X, Y, zero, zero is so advantageous. All right, the last thing we're gonna do is create another circle. This is going to be, I can create this off to the side if I want and I'll add some constraints. So I will make this concentric. So I'll select the circle I sketched, the hub, that will create a, a concentric constraint, giving them the same origin. And I can also make this equal. And then I'm gonna trim, and now I have my completed constrained sketch. So at this time, I can hit finish sketch, take a look at this from an isometric point of view, and we're going to activate this sketch as a profile and cut it from the front all the way through to the back. So hit extrude, there's my profile, cut all, okay, and there I have it, looks just like the sheet on the hub. 
All right. Next up, we're going to take a look at the counterboard holes. So we're going to be creating a new sketch on the back face. And this time I'm not going to use a circle. This time I'm going to use a point, which I believe is something I've taught you before. So we're going to use the hole feature uh, to save ourselves some time. So we're going to go, we're going to use the point. I'm going to come down here. I'm just going to click somewhere on X zero and Y something like that. So I've got my point on at least X zero. I'm going to hit dimension. We're going to dimension the point to the origin because according to the iPad image, this dimension is 1.690 right there. And this is this should be all we need. We don't really need another constraint. It doesn't really go purple, but it should be good enough. Right, this over constrains the sketch. Um, basically, we could run a dimension from here to here and that would make it go purple. Uh, not really required, but it's good enough. So we're gonna hit finish sketch and we're gonna hit hole. All right, so let's put this into an isometric point of view. So what we want here, we don't want a simple hole. We want what's called a counterboard hole, right? And this is what you're seeing. You're seeing a larger hole with a flat square shoulder on top of a smaller hole. And that's what you're seeing here. That is what a counterboard hole looks like. So we need to input some numbers here. So we need to know what the smaller hole diameter is. So it is listed as 0.375. So we're going to update that one first. And then the larger one can't be the same size. So it's listed as 0 0.750. Now that's going to take away those red zones, right? So no, that, that clears that up. And we need to know how deep this should go, right? So the counterboard hole is showing as a depth of 0.3. And then lastly, um, there's no termination here. So this smaller hole needs to go through the back. So we're gonna take that and we're going to select through all. So we really only need three values here. Right, so let's double check this. The smaller hole is 0.375. The larger diameter hole is 0.75. And the depth is 0.300 for the counterboard hole. So that's good enough. So we're going to hit OK. And it is going to create that counterbore for us. Now that is much quicker and easier than using multiple circle extrusions. Right? I would have had to have created two different sketches and two different extrusions to create that counterbore effect, that counterbore effect with um, your basic 2D circle and extrusion feature. Right? And I'm trying to save uh, time and I'm trying to save work as I do this. So next up, we're going to create the other two holes, but we're not going to be repeating the point and hole feature. We're going to be using the circular pattern. So what we're going to be doing is going up to pattern, finding circular, select it, and then the circular pattern menu will pop up. So first it wants to know what the feature is going to be. So the feature is going to be hole one. So I select it on the project browser. The rotation, the rotation axis needs to be selected. We're rotating it along the circumference of the rear flange. So I'm going to select the back here and it's going to start to preview some of these for me. Now it's giving me a placement of six. I don't need six. I need three of these. So I'm going to change placement from six to three, but it's, it's equally spacing them along 360 degrees. Again, which is not what I want. I only want this to be done over half 
the diameter. So a whole circle is 360 degrees. What is half? Right, that's going to be 180. So I'm going to update this. And again, this still doesn't look the way I want it to look. Um, I want one here. I already have this one. I need this one to be on this side. Let's look at this from the front view. So what are we going to do? We can change the mid plane here. That's all I need to do. Hit the mid plane. It's going to position this one here. So I'm going to have them in the correct position as per this sheet. And I'm going to hit OK. And it creates them. So much, much quicker to use these features, whole and circular pattern. So there is the modeling completed for the centering bushing. I'd like you to complete this exercise the way I've shown you. I'd like you to start practicing some of these other commands, such as using your circle pattern and using your point in sketch mode and whole feature in your, in your part uh, in your part feature. So we're going to hit file, save as, and I've cleaned up my desktop here, so I'm just going to throw it on the desktop. I'm going to be calling this centering bushing exactly what it's called and I'm going to hit save and I'm ready to turn this into a drawing file for later so good luck try this out let me know if you have any problems and talk to you soon